Touchdown! 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 The Bills make me wanna shout. Kick your heels up and shout. Throw your hands up and shout. Throw your head back and shout. But come on now, the Bills are making it happen now. Stand up now, come on and shout. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout it right. What's up, Buffalo Fanatics? Welcome back to the Buffalo Fanatics Podcast. I am your host, Fern Bannatine. You can reach me on Twitter at, at @fbanity. You can also reach me at the Buffalo Fanatics Podcast Twitter page. It's at @bufffanaticspod. Now, it's probably the slowest time of the year for NFL fans. We are into early July. It is the dog days of summer. I feel like a broken record. I said this the last few weeks, but there's not much to report in terms of Buffalo Bills news. And on the NFL front in general, there's not much news going on either. It seems that if there is news around this time of the year, it's normally not good news. Unfortunately, there's some pretty tragic stories that developed over the past week or so. Most of you may have heard that Miami Dolphins and former Miami Hurricanes defensive tackle Kendrick Norton was involved in a a very serious car accident early on the morning of July 4th. Unfortunately, it led to him having to have his left arm amputated. Uh, It ends his football career, obviously. You never want to hear these stories about uh, anybody in the league, of course. Now, if there's a silver lining to the story, though, uh, it's that the accident could have been a lot worse. Just given the circumstances of the accident, it seems as though the truck he was driving hit a concrete barrier and rolled over a few times. It didn't sound very pretty, so the fact that he is able to get get out of there alive is a good thing. And we hope that he can go on and live a relatively normal life. Uh, And our thoughts and prayers are with his family at this point. And we wish him a a speedy recovery. It's good to see that he's been moved out of critical and stable condition. So let's hope that he continues to progress on the road to recovery here. Now, the other piece of tragic news that happened just a day before uh, Kendrick Norton's accident was the uh, tragic passing of former New York Giants quarterback Jarrett Lorenzen. Our thoughts are also with his family. He leaves behind two young children. Of course, most people know Lorenzen for his uh, relatively well-publicized battle with obesity. To me, he was one of those guys that would kind of pop up in the news every few years uh, with some kind of football story, normally a fairly good news story about a, a, some sort of comeback or winning MVP or in a arena football league or some sort of story like that. Also, a little-known fact is he did win a Super Bowl ring as a backup to Eli Manning back in 2007. And then post-NFL career, he, he did play uh, indoor arena football for a few years. Uh, in 2011, he was the MVP of the Ultimate Indoor Football League for, uh, for the Northern Kentucky River Monsters. He actually went on to be commissioner of the league after that season. So he definitely had a, an interesting and highly accomplished life in his uh, 38 years. And again, our thoughts and prayers are with his family. So outside of those tragic stories, uh, what I thought I'd do on this week's podcast is, uh, so well, first of all, we've been kind of looking ahead to the 2019 season. The last few podcasts, we've looked at some over-under prop bets. We've looked at where the Bills' defense might rank this year or going into the 2019 season. But over the next two weeks, I want to be a little more uh, retrospective. Uh, What I want to do is take a look back at the last 10 years of Buffalo Bills football. And try to put together an all-decade team. So again, it's going to be a two-part series. First and foremost, this week, I'm going to do the offense. So I'm going to look at the 11 players that I would consider to be uh, the best Buffalo Bills over the last decade. And then next week, uh, we'll switch to defense. And we'll take a look at the best 11 players per position uh, to make up the all-Bills decade um, defensive team. I'm also going to choose a few special teams players, uh, namely a kicker this week and then a punter next week. A very important position, so we can't discount those players. And the criteria for choosing these players was uh, them being best at their position. Uh, Longevity will count for something, so a a player that was a stalwart and played for a few years uh, over the course of a few seasons over the last decade. Uh, we'll get a little more consideration than, say, a player who played at a high level for maybe one year or maybe two years or so. Uh, but I'm not totally going to discount those players either because uh, there's some cases where we had very average starters for the course of a long time, whereas other players at the position only played one to two years for us and uh, probably deserved more credit than those 
a below average players that we trotted out there and probably took a little too long to replace in some cases. So the 10 year period would be 2009 all the way up to 2018, that's last season. And I found some of these decisions rather easy, whereas others were a little more difficult and uh, challenging. And unfortunately, it, it was actually uh, very tough to pick a, a player in, at some positions, just given how mediocre we were at the position over the last 10 years. And it, it was pretty sad to see that. Uh, but I did my best to try it out to a player who I thought uh, was the best at his position over the last decade. Now, let's start with our all-decade offensive team. We'll start with quarterback. And there's only really two viable candidates for our starting quarterback. I think we can quickly discount E.J. Manuel. He was never even really able to finish a full season as our starting quarterback. We can also discount Josh Allen, who, of course, has only played one season for us. And for as much as we saw some potential last year, uh, it's fair to say that it wasn't exactly a stellar season for the young quarterback. Lots of inconsistencies and, of course, only 10 touchdown passes. He did rush for a few touchdowns as well. But I definitely don't think he did enough in that one year to make this all-decade team. So that leaves us with uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick and Tyrod Taylor as the two options. Uh, two quarterbacks who you would really like to have on your team as a backup quarterbacks. Probably two of the better backup quarterbacks in the league. But gosh, when you're putting together an all-decade team, and the best you can do is garner up a quarterback who projects as a, a really good backup quarterback in the league. And that's the best quarterback you've had in the last 10 years. Uh, it's pretty pathetic and unfortunate. And it goes to show you why this fan base is just so eager and optimistic to see if Josh Allen turns into a franchise quarterback. Now, first of all, with Ryan Fitzpatrick, we have a quarterback who started 53 games for us over five years from 2009 to 2013. Definitely wasn't all bad. He did have his flashes. He did get off to a hot start for us in 2011. Uh, but his Achilles heel was always those interceptions, as is still the case currently in his career. Uh, he'd like to take a lot of chances, but he just didn't have the arm strength to compensate for all those chances that he took. And you compare that to Tyrod, who was a bit of an opposite type quarterback. Uh, his problem was he never took enough chances. He was always a bit gun shy to throw the ball into tight quarters. One of his first instincts always seemed to be to escape the pocket and take off and run with the ball. Uh, but overall, in the big picture of things, I think that led to a little bit more success. As frustrating as it was to watch, Tyrod had a winning record over the course of games that he started as our quarterback. He was 22-20 and 20 over the course of three years as our starting quarterback from 2015 to 2017. Uh, so based on the fact that Tyrod was able to win some games for us, and I think really that's the bottom line when it comes to quarterbacking, we also have to take into account that Tyrod was our drought breaker. Uh, he's the quarterback that got us to the playoffs after that 17-year drought. Uh, so I'm going to give the nod to Tyrod Taylor as our all-decade starting quarterback. But again, it really highlights uh, how average to below average we've been at the position over the last decade. When a slightly below average to below average quarterback is the best quarterback we've had on this roster in the last 10 years. So moving on to the running back position. And this one comes down to three players. Uh, we start with Fred Jackson and then CJ Spiller. And then of course LaShawn McCoy who's been our uh, one of our best players over the last few years. Uh, and this one was pretty tough for me. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Fred Jackson is one of if not my all time favorite Bill I love his leadership qualities. I love what he did for the community and what he meant for Bill's Mafia. Uh, but just based on numbers and just based on the dominant two-year stretch that LaShawn McCoy put together in 2016 and 2017, and he was especially dominant in that 2016 season you know, with Anthony Lynn at the helm and in charge of the offense. And I think one of the drawbacks for Jackson is he was uh, very often in a time-sharing kind of role, first with Marshawn Lynch and then with C.J. Spiller later on. So I do have to begrudgingly give the nod to LaShawn McCoy here. But that leads to the next position on the roster. And I realize that we have a fullback position open here. And I'm going to give this one a little bit of a twist. I'm going to go with uh, another productive halfback in Fred Jackson to, to man that fullback role. As I really want to get him on this all-decade roster, I believe. Uh, despite McCoy putting up some better numbers... I believe Fred Jackson really does deserve the accolades to be on our all-decade team, so I'm going to slip him in at fullback here. 
And we're going to go with a pro set offensive formation uh, to get both the halfback and the fullback on the field on this uh, all decade team. Of course, that only leaves us with two wide receiver slots. Uh, and moving on to wide receiver, well, uh, there were there are about three pretty solid candidates that I, that I considered here. And those would be Stevie Johnson, Robert Woods, and Sammy Watkins. Of course, I also had to consider if the th- third best of these receivers uh, w- would be better to have on the team than Fred Jackson, and obviously I chose Jackson. I suppose I could have went with a single back set here or some kind of spread formation if we had enough quality receivers that I wanted to make this all-decade team. Uh, so with only two receivers lining up at wide receiver one, uh, I got to go with Stevie Johnson here. He's going to make this team just such a wonderful, very unique NFL player. He was one of the better route runners I've ever witnessed, at least on the Buffalo Bills. Just extremely creative, and he developed a pretty good rapport when, with Ryan Fitzpatrick when he was our starting quarterback. And Johnson was on the team from 2009 to 2013, and from 2010 to 2012, he put up three consecutive 1,000-yard seasons. Of course, not with the best starting quarterback out there, as we've already discussed. He's also a guy that really embraced Buffalo and embraced the fans. He had a lot of fun out there. Uh, some of you may recall from the 2010 season when he unveiled his Why So Serious shirt in a game against the Cincinnati Bengals to kind of counter the uh, Bengals duo of Ocho Cinco and Terrell Owens, who had the Batman and Robin Slick going out there. Uh, so he really embraced the fans. He was a lot of fun out there. Of course, the community embraced him back, and he makes this all-decade team. Now for wide receiver two, uh, well, ultimately it wasn't that close. I just think that Sammy Watkins was much more of an effective player when he was actually healthy out there. Uh, he had some pretty exciting seasons, particularly his first two seasons in the league when he came in as the fourth overall pick. We had traded up for him. He just fell short of 1,000 yards receiving in his first season, and then in his second season he did eclipse the mark. He, he was just more of a difference maker when he was actually out there. Robert Woods may have been a little more consistent, a little more healthy. But ultimately, when Robert Woods was on the Bills, he was more of your, say, average number two receiver where he wasn't that kind of dynamic difference maker. Now, he's since gone on to uh, elevate his game playing for the Los Angeles Rams, but I'm going to go with Sammy Watkins as our second receiver here. And Robert Woods is the guy out of these running backs and wide receivers that misses the cut. Now, if we move on to offensive line, I'm just kind of looking over the candidates out there and... I don't really like what I see in some of these positions, but I'm going to try to get the five best offensive linemen out there on the field here. Uh, We're going to start with Cordy Glenn as our left tackle. Uh, That one's pretty much a given. He started as our left tackle for six seasons, and he offered some above-average play for sure. Uh, He's one of Buddy Nix's better finds in the draft as a second-round draft pick when a lot of people thought he had his shortcomings and he would only be a guard in the NFL, but he managed to play left tackle at a a fairly high level, and he gets the nod here at left tackle. Now, at left guard, uh, we're going to go with Richie Incognito. Now, here's a guy who obviously had his controversy uh, leaving Miami with the whole bullying scandal, but I thought he came in here and really redeemed himself for a little while. He played... Three straight seasons, started in all 16 games from 2015 to 2017. And frankly, he was one of our one of the best players on the team during that period. A really good pulling and trapping guard. Now he's gone on to have a few additional controversial issues post-Buffalo Bills career. Possibly some mental health issues, possibly related to CTE. Now, we don't really know the details, but he is trying to take another stab at redemption again. And another comeback bid with uh, John Gruden and Tom Cable over in Oakland. I, for one, will definitely be watching uh, Oakland to see how that plays out with that cast of characters over there. Uh, So we move on to center. Uh, This one's fairly easy. I'm not going to spend too much time here. It's Eric Wood, who was our starting center for the Buffalo Bills from 2009 until 2017. Uh, One of the team leaders, one of the heart and soul players for this team over the last decade. It's still unfortunate that he had to retire due to a neck injury a little earlier than probably he would have expected at the age of 31. But uh, suffice to say, for those nine years, he was one of our better players on the team. Now at right guard, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move a natural left guard over to right guard to fill out this roster, and that's Andy Levitre. Here's another really good pulling and trapping guard. 
Um, from 2009 to 2012, he started every game for us. That's uh, 48 straight games, if you're doing the math. A really solid player, another above-average uh, lineman. Never made a Pro Bowl with when he was with the Buffalo Bills, but t- definitely worthy of this all-decade team here. Gosh, a right tackle. Now here's where it gets interesting. Uh, we've had a lot of trouble at right tackle. We haven't really had an above-average starter over the last decade. Um, it really came down to two guys here. The first was Eric Pears, who uh, was the starting of uh, right tackle during the first kind of five or so years, uh, give or take. He was our starting left tackle for the years of 2011, 2013, and 2014. And then Jordan Mills, who was our starting right tackle from 2015 all the way up to 2018. Uh, both players were, like our quarterback situation, I think it's fair to say that both players were slightly below average uh, NFL starters. I thought Mills did, did a good job at times. Now, he had some absolutely terrible games. That game against the Raiders and Khalil Mack comes to mind. And I think a lot of fans kind of remember the, the worst of times and forget that most of the time he was average enough out there. It was always one of those positions where he wasn't very good, but we we had other needs, so we never really prioritized replacing the player. And I think he, he was a good character guy. The coaches really liked him. He worked his butt off. So I'm going to give Jordan Mills the nod here. I don't feel too comfortable about this pick. Uh, I also consider Deion Dawkins, who had a really good rookie year. Uh, but just the fact that he does struggle so much on the right side, it was hard to put him here. And he did he did have his inconsistencies last year. So I'm going to give Jordan Mills the nod over him. Uh, Sandro Henderson's another guy considered. But I don't think he was here long enough or started long enough to actually realistically be considered as an all-decade type Buffalo Bill player. Okay then, Uh, so we're going to move on to the tight end position. Now I hear this position again comes down to uh, a battle between two players, uh, the early part of the decade again and the uh, latter part of the decade. And those players are Scott Chandler and Charles Clay. Gosh, I sound like a broken record, but it's another battle between two fairly mediocre players. Uh, during both of their tenures here, they were uh, below average NFL starters, respectively. And actually, if you take a look at their receptions and receiving stats over the course of the time uh, they were started for the Bills, the numbers are actually very uh, eerily close to each other. But I'm going to give the nods to Scott Chandler here. I think he was a slightly better blocker. Uh, he did end up having three more receptions. In the four years that he was a starter here from 2011 to 2014, he also had uh, significantly more touchdowns. He actually had eight more touchdowns than Clay, who also started for the Bills for four years. So even though Chandler is another mediocre all-decade player, I have to give him the nod as our starting uh, all-decade tight end. Now moving on to the last position of the day. Uh, We're going to choose a kicker from the last decade who's going to make the all-decade team. Now, finally, a breath of fresh air where there's actually some decent options here. Uh, There are only three options to consider, and all of them are decent. So we start with Ryan Lindell, who was our kicker early in the decade. Then for most of the decade, we had a pretty solid kicker in Dan Carpenter. And we finished it off, of course, with Stephen Hoshka the last two years as our kicker. Now, uh, first and foremost, I think we can easily discount Ryan Lindell. I just think Dan Carpenter and Stephen Hoshka were better kickers, uh, had better percentages. Uh, nothing nothing wrong at all with Ryan Lindell, but I just think that uh, he's overruled by two better kickers here. Uh, coming down to Dan Carpenter and uh, Stephen Hoshka, uh, we can make a pretty solid case for Dan Carpenter, first of all. Uh, he was our kicker for four years, from 2013 to 2016. Whereas, of course, Hoshka only kicked for us for two years. But I am going to give the nod to Stephen Hoshka. Just mostly because of that 2017 season where I thought he should have been considered as one of our MVP candidates. He just made so many clutch and, in many cases, game-winning kicks that season. And he was one of the real reasons behind us breaking the drought and making the playoffs that season. So I'm going to have to recognize him for that. Uh, He wasn't as solid in 2018, but he wasn't bad by any stretch. Uh, So I'm going to give Stephen Hoshka the nod here 
Just because, again, he, he was the kicker that was one of the primary reasons that we uh, made the playoffs. And as the only kicker over the last decade who uh, played in a playoff game for us, uh, Stephen Hoska is going to round out this all-decade offensive team for the Buffalo Bills. So to recap our all-decade offensive team for the Buffalo Bills from 2009 to 2018, we will start with quarterback where we have Tyrod Taylor. Then our running back, we have LaShawn McCoy. We also have Fred Jackson, who's going to play fullback for us. Our starting wide receivers are Stevie Johnson and Sammy Watkins. Along the offensive line, we have Cordy Glenn, Richie Incognito, Eric Woods, of course, Andy Levitre, and then Jordan Mills rounds it out. And at tight end, we have Scott Chandler. And lastly, our kicker is Stephen Hoshka. So that's going to do it for this week's podcast. Uh, Let me know what you think of my uh, all-decade team, at least on offense. And be sure to tune in next week because we're going to take a crack at an all-defensive team. Uh, Just looking at some of the names I have jotted down, and I think we're a little better on the defensive side of the ball over the last decade, in particular on the defensive line. Some really good options there. So uh, next week's episode might even be a little more exciting than this one. So until next week, uh, again, you can reach me on Twitter if you like at at FBanity. You can hit me up on YouTube on your comments. I appreciate the comments that you've been leaving me. And uh, let's go Buffalo Bills.